testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back the second show of the day. They're the first show of the day early on our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. Please check that out on the return of Virgil Ortiz. Now we're doing a show on the return of Terrence Bud Crawford, who's not fighting Virgil Ortiz. Uh, but we'll get into that. Uh, but first, please like and subscribe. Um, share 3D Boxing. Um, page on all forms of social media. Uh, please also like our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, where all proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Please uh, also uh, hit the bell icon, smash the thumbs up, all that good stuff. Uh, but let's get into today's, the second show of today, Terrence Bud Crawford, who, like I said, um, it, it is set to return. Um, no name yet. Um we're, we're going to start guessing who it is, but October 23rd is when he's set to return. So another long layoff for, for, for Terrence Crawford. Well, another long period of inactivity. And no-named opponent. I can tell you who it's not. It's not Virgil Ortiz. It's not Errol Spence. It's not Manny Pacquiao, for sure. It's likely not Sean Porter. Very likely not Sean Porter, who they refuse to negotiate with. And it's probably... Highly likely not happening. Allegedly, I heard Keith Urban, who's fighting Sean Porter, I think, allegedly. Um, so who is it? Jose Cinco Lopez's name is out there. I mean, like, I don't know what they're doing with Terrence Crawford. They are wasting him since he's gone up to 147. Horn, Benavides, Kel Brook, um, Amir Khan, uh, Mean Machine. These are the names he's beaten at 147. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, those aren't terrible names. It's not a terrible resume. It's not it's a decent resume. That's the pound for pound king of the sport, the guy who allegedly says he's the pound for pound king of the sport, who I had as number one king, a number one pound for pound king for a while after Andre Ward retired and, and, and before uh, Canelo knocked out Kovalev, I had this man at number one. This is a ridiculous resume. I mean, could you imagine if Pacquiao in his prime – or, or, or Roy Jones in his prime, or you know uh, De La Hoya in his prime, or Floyd Mayweather in his prime, fought these names. Again, there's nothing wrong with these names. It's not terrible fun. And, and, and if you weren't a power packer, if you were looking for your first, if this was Mario Barrios' his first title shot, right, uh, for uh, resume, at this stage of his career, he was 26, and this was his resume, fine. It's, it's not bad. But he's not a kid. He, he's 33 years old. He's exiting the prime of his career, and, and this is what he's done the last three years. It's a shame. It's an absolute shame. This is, uh, again, this is Kel Brook, fine, former champion. Amir Khan, fine, former multi-division world champion. Like, there's nothing technically wrong with these names, but there's way better guys that you could fight. Sean Porter has worked out a deal to fight every other top welterweight in the world. Adrian Broner. Big name, not not a star. Keith Thurman, big name. I mean, Broner's a big big name. He's a star. He's not a great fighter. But uh, Adrian Broner, Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, uh, Errol Spence. He's fought all of them. Cal Brook. He's fought all of them. He's worked out a deal with all of them. So he's not impossible to work with. Actually, he's very easy to work with because every other top ultimate has worked with him. And don't give me their all the PBC side because he because he fought um, Cal Brook too. So he's easily to work with. How come Terrence Crawford can't work with him? When Sean Porter said, post Danny Garcia, Errol Spence fight, that he prioritized the fight with Crawford. Because he was mandatory for both organizations. He, he Number one, ranked by both organizations. He preferred, he, he, he prioritized fighting Crawford. Then they offered $1 million for the fight, allegedly, I heard. I mean, this is... Um, Oh, that's not allegedly. Bob Arum confirmed that they offered him a million dollars. Um, I, I, I've been a, a Crawford fan. I've been a Crawford apologist at times. I think he's skilled. I think he's nearly the perfect fighter. I think they're just wasting him. 
I don't think it's much different than what PBC did with Lauder. So I'm not picking on top rank, but Crawford is a star in the money division and they've wasted him. And, and, and after Spence, beats Pacquiao or vice versa, but Spence is going to win that fight. He's he's going to have to take 80 20, a 20 percent split. Like it's that, you know what I'm saying? Because this, this Spence. Pacquiao is going to do at least half a million buys, probably six, seven, eight hundred thousand. It's a big fight, and, and, and Crawford's going to fight who? Cesito Lopez. I mean, like, to be real, you got to call up Ugas and at least get Ugas in the belt. Really, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell him anymore. You can't fight Jose Cesito Lopez after fighting Cal Brook, after fighting Mean Machine, after fighting Amir Khan the last two, three years, and like that's your resume. This, this, this that that can't be it. You know, it's a shame because he has not he's a Hall of Famer. He's got not just, not just Hall of Fame town. He has all time great tell your grandchildren about town, right? Like Chris Mullen is a Hall of Famer. Chris Mullen's not Kobe Bryant or or, or, or LeBron James, but he's still a Hall of Famer, he's a great player. But you know, the, there's only even at the Hall of Fame level, there's still levels, right? There's your 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 your, your baseline Hall of Fame player. And your all time great that you tell your grandchildren about. Crawford had that talent and he's done nothing with it. And I'm not just blaming Crawford, although Crawford has a hand in this. Right? Crawford never really promoted himself. Crawford, when he fought in Dongo, became undisputed at 140, he didn't want to do any interviews because they didn't make him. Guys, okay, the NFL it doesn't sell you, it doesn't sell your, it doesn't sell itself. You have to sell it. And he didn't want to do that. Bob Arm has actually obviously been a nightmare. I, I don't know why he's still with top rank. Buy yourself out of the contract. Bob Aram says he's losing money on you. Just buy yourself out of the contract. Go over to PBC. Get the fight you want. But he doesn't want to do that because he just wants to fight. And then, and, and I get it. But you're not getting the fight. You're fighting Jose Lopez, likely, allegedly, I heard. This is this is not how one of the great fighters of his era to be spending his, the prime, the end of his entire prime. Right? I mean, he beat Ndongo when he was 29. So he fought in Dongo, and then he fought Jeff Horn, Benavides, Amir Khan. You know what I'm saying? It's Cal Brook, Mean Machine. Not not order. But let me know what you guys think. Um, are, are, uh, you have any other names? I, I, I mean, I want him to fight Ugas. That's the best name that's available. Uh, but I think it's going to be Jose de Lopez, which is a PBC guy. If you're going to fight a PBC guy, why not just fight Ugas or Abel Ramos? Who lost to Ugas to just fight Ugas, but those names are better. Um, let me know what you think. Fight Bootsinus. Fight Bootsinus. Uh, thoughts, comments below. Uh, please like, subscribe uh, to 3D Boxing, as well as our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, where all proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Um, it is June 23rd, 2021. Ivan Calderon is still not in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Let's make that change. Let's get the Iron Boy in. From Texas to the world, thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.